person who offered the 1023 said, I don't know whether this is true. So you can't depend on anything in that 1023. Third, as we said before, Hunter Biden has offered to testify before this committee. This committee has turned him down. He's offered to testify in public. He can do it under the same rules as a deposition, but he doesn't want his, his remarks to be cherry-picked and distorted for public release. And given the record of this committee, I don't blame him. Ninety people have come in for transcribed interviews. The full text has been released for exactly one of them. The others have been selectively released, and we know some of that has been distorted with, with half sentences released and the other half sentence not released. For the committee to fully understand the scope of the issues that a report or legislation would respond to, the report must include examples of possible enrichment of President's family members, including Trump's son-in-law uh, uh, and former senior advisor Jared Kushner. And we know, by the way, that he was denied security clearance to become senior advisor, but that the president personally overruled that. Kushner's firm received $2 billion from illicit connections in the Middle East for his private equity firm, thanks to relationships he fostered while acting as a public official with a top security clearance on issues related to the region. This $2 billion investment came from a Saudi fund led by the Crown Prince. This investment accounts for the majority of Kushner's funds, approximately $3 billion in holdings, and raises very substantial concerns as to whether there was any form of quid pro quo for his funding secured during Kushner's term in the White House. In addition, as I said, Kushner's security clearance approval was fraught with controversy. In fact, it was, it was, uh, it was not just fraught with controversy. It was disallowed until overruled by the president. And Kushner advocated heavily for Saudi Arabian interests when he was a policy advisor to the then president. And if we're going to have a balanced uh, uh, resolution, we should include this as well as the Hunter Biden thing. And let me mention one other thing. There's a special prosecutor appointed by Merrick Garland to deal with Hunter Biden. Hunter Biden may very well have committed crimes. I don't know. I hold no brief for him. But Hunter Biden is not an elected official. And there has been not one iota of evidence that anything that Hunter Biden did benefited the president or that the president was involved in any way, which is the only legitimate concern for this committee, whether the president was involved. And after all the investigations, there is not one iota of evidence that the president was involved in any way. I yield back. I'll yield to the gentleman from... Uh, Tennessee. Thank, thank you. I heard some talk, it was kind of, I guess, just uh, off the cuff, but it was about Hunter Biden's business of experience and abilities compared to uh, Jared Kushner's. Uh, 666 Fifth Avenue, which Jared Kushner bought at the height of the real estate boom and then was saved when it was about to go broke by, the, I think, the, the gutteries who gave him the money in some type of transaction to save the building, was considered, I believe, Mr. Nadler, to be one of the worst real estate deals ever in the city of New York. You, were you aware of that 666 Fifth Avenue deal? I'm aware of that deal. It's in my district. Yeah, 666. It's interesting, the numbers. Uh, and then he, he bought the, the, the New York Observer and took it and bought it at a high price and sold it at just about a nothing price, garbage price, and he basically ruined that paper too. So I would submit with all... Uh, without any particular regard or endorsement of Mr. Uh, 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 Biden's business abilities, I think he's equal to Jared Kushner's. Yield. And I yield back. Gentleman yields. The chair recognizes Mr. Issa, the gentleman from California. I thank the chairman. Uh, amazing how we've now digressed into whether somebody's a good businessman or not. I would... Uh, would assert that uh, this is not the committee likely to make that decision particularly well. Uh, I also would assert that the personal financial statements of Jared Kushner are available online because he did uh, file them. And uh, when I looked at him, I recognized at a minimum that he is uh, wealthy. 
Uh, I'm not going to argue whether someone's a successful businessman or whether uh, a particular acquisition was made at the height of the market or the bottom of the market. That all sounds pretty irrelevant, particularly considering that, once again, they want to bring somebody for whom there has been no referral, for whom there was not a, uh, a subpoena from this committee uh, that was thwarted. We have one individual who did not answer the subpoena, but rather showed up down the, up the other side of the Capitol, deliberately uh, flipping, as I said earlier, the middle finger uh, at the American people. And we are here today to hold that man in contempt. The hope is that uh, when faced with the uh, criminal contempt and the possibility of incarceration, not for the crimes that apparently he's already pled to, but in fact for an, yet another crime, not answering the subpoena, that he just might come and answer our questions honestly. Many on the other side of the aisle are saying, well, there's no evidence, there's no evidence. Well, I've got to tell you, I've never heard that you have to have all the evidence before you ask the questions in an investigation. What we have is an individual who goes and does business deals, and then those business deals affect the policies of the vice president, so much so that the vice president had one policy when he got on an airplane on the way to Ukraine relative to the prosecutor, a prosecutor that was going after Hunter Biden's business partners. And by the time he got off, his policy became Ukraine gets none of the funding from America until you fire this prosecutor. And by the way, the vice president has taken credit for it. It's not debatable. So when we have the opportunity to ask Hunter Biden questions, those questions will include what did you say to your father? a man who said he had no business dealings with his son, had no financial interest. As a matter of fact, he said about five different things. They keep changing. The one thing we know is he did have conversations and texts that inclu and, uh, included what Hunter Biden's businesses were doing. Funds did come to the residence of the vice president. And in fact, Hunter Biden also had accounts which were joint with the vice president. If Hunter Biden was selling preferences as he clearly was, he was very publicly in China, in Ukraine, in Russia, he was selling my business has the access to the White House, in that case to the executive office of the vice president. He was selling it. If he was selling it and he didn't have it, come and say that. If it was all just a fraud to get money from foreign governments, come and say that. But when we see him taking money and we see actions of the vice president changing on a dime in a direction of his son's needs, we have a legitimate right to ask, the, ask Hunter Biden to come here. We have done so. He declined. We subpoenaed him. He did not decline, but rather offered to have a staged public event. And the chairman, rightfully so, said, we'd like to have four, six, eight hours of no theatrics, just question and answer. Rather than saying he wouldn't come, we sat here waiting for him to come. Well, he had a theatric activity on the other side of the dome where he had a staged press conference where we sat here seriously waiting for a deposition. That is why we are here for contempt. Don't be confused by statements of who is a good business person or not, who has done well financially or not, who these allegations of, uh, of gain by the president or his fa former president or his family. That's not an issue here today. If you want to have that at issue, bring a motion. But right now, we have a motion in front of us, and I look forward to the vote on the motion, and I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Gentleman from uh, Maryland on the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, just briefly before I yield, um, I did want to say the, the issue about who was a good business person was raised by the Republicans, not us. Uh, so if, if you don't want it to come up, your side shouldn't bring it up. With respect to this bad prosecutor issue um, of getting the, the prosecutor fired, I think that's been you know, repeatedly debunked uh, that this was an individual who not only did you know, 
uh, the United States wanted him fired, but it was internationally. There was a desire to get rid of him because he wasn't doing his job. And made it more, the replacement of him with an actual uh, effective prosecutor made it more likely that Hunter Biden might have gotten in trouble. Uh, and then briefly on this, I mean, you guys keep saying that you've got a right to this information or that information. He offered to come and give you the information and testimony. And, you know, you decline. not only did he offer to do it, he did it in response to Chairman Comer's invitation to do it. Uh, Chairman Comer invited Hunter Biden to come September 13th, 2023. Hunter Biden's more than welcome to come in front of the, the committee. He's invited today. We will drop everything. On October 31st, 2023, Comer invited him again, saying, we're in the downhill phase of this investigation now because we have so many documents. We can bring these people in for depositions or hearings, whichever they choose. That's Chairman Comer's language. So, you know, he took you up on the, chair, on the uh, Oversight Committee Chairman's language. You guys walked away from it after that. I think you might be nervous about what he might actually say. But that's the language of a statement who came from a committee chair whose name was on the subpoena. With that, I yield to my colleague from Pennsylvania. I thank the gentleman. Uh, we're here today about trying to hold Hunter Biden in contempt for failing to respond to the subpoena. Uh, and of course, it, it's, you've got everything upside down. Hunter Biden offered to testify right here under oath, and yet I'm now hearing from the other side of the aisle that would have been a staged event. Does that mean that every person you have called to testify here is just a staged event? Or are you actually trying to figure out facts and what has gone on? The majority on this uh, committee is only interested in looking backward. And they only want to look backward so far. They only want to look at Hunter Biden. God forbid we would look at the former president and his family members who benefited personally from the president's position, who pocketed personally money during the administration, by the way. And yet, I really refer you all to your own memo. This is supposed to be future-looking. This is supposed to be how we craft legislation to deal with these issues. Read the first paragraph of page three. Quote, the testimony sought by the subpoena is also relevant to ongoing efforts to craft legislative reforms to federal ethics and financial disclosure laws. The committee seek to craft legislative solutions that provide transparency when the president's or vice president's family members engage in lucrative financial transactions. As part of our investigation, the committees seek to craft legislative solutions aimed at the deficiencies we have identified in the current legal framework regarding ethics laws and the disclosure of financial interest related to the immediate family members of the vice presidents and presidents, deficiencies that may place American national security and interests at risk. Specifically, the committees are concerned that foreign nationals appear to have sought access and influence by engaging in lucrative business relationships with high-profile political figures, immediate family members. Doesn't that sound like that was drafted for Donald Trump and his family? It's future-looking. Let's craft legislation based on our recent experience with Donald Trump. I yield back. Uh, let me re reclaim my time, and I ask for unanimous consent to uh, issue, to enter the uh, article debunking four viral rumors about the Bidens in Ukraine by Davy Alba, dated October 29, 2019. Without objection. I yield back. The gentleman yields back. Um, we're going to go to Mr. Bentz. Then, then I just have a unanimous consent. Unanimous consent, then. I ask unanimous consent to put in the record a statement by myself and Mr. Schiff. Um, and I'll just note that good luck on getting a prosecution for somebody who's been willing to testify, and I yield back. Without objection. Uh, the gentleman from Oregon, uh, and we'll try to, we got votes coming soon. We'll try to deal with this amendment, maybe one more. I know there's a couple more that the Democrats have. The gentleman's recognized. I'll be brief, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, thank you. And, and regarding Ms. Dean's amendment, uh, I just want to re remind folks, not, not that it'll do any good, uh, to emphasize what this hearing is not, and, and it's not about uh, it's not about the, the Kushners. It's, it's not about um, what other people may have done. It's about the refusal of Mr. Uh, Hunter Biden to show up when he was subpoenaed uh, for a deposition. That's what this is about. And so, the, the, of course, it's necessary to point out why he is an important witness, but that's not the issue before us today. The issue before us today is why did he choose to ignore 
a subpoena issued by this body. That's the issue before us today. And one of the things that's relevant is that is he a, 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 a does he have some sort of reason that would support his not showing up? And that's why I asked to be included in the record earlier the CRS report on the authority of this committee to to decide how it wants to elicit evidence concerning the type of allegations that that may ultimately lead to the president's impeachment. But that's not why we're here today. We're here today to ask, our, to ask the question, I suppose, why in the world didn't Mr. Hunter Biden show up when he was subpoenaed, as opposed to parading around in this building today, uh, doing his best, I guess, to call out uh, what he thinks is our inability to hold him to the law. As in, he should be embarrassed. I'm sure he's not. But the, the, the point that we should be focusing upon is, are we enthusiastic about shoring up the power and authority of this committee to do its work? And if people are going to uh, take this kind of opportunity to um, thwart uh, the, the power of this committee, that, that should concern all of us. Uh, because the public expects us to do our best when we have evidence to try to get to the facts. And to that point again, Mr. Chair, I, I just want to go back to, to why a deposition is the right way to do this. First of all, it's how we generally approach things. Secondly, we have a set of rules that suggest this is the approach we should be using. And, and for, for us to do something other than take the deposition first and then bring the witness in in front of this committee would be to fail the American people in how to appropriately get to the facts. Now, the folks on the other uh, side of the aisle may say, and certainly have, uh, as they try to distract from, from the real issue, that other people should be brought in, that we should expand our approach to including uh, everybody. Uh, that's not what we're here for. We're here to try to figure out how in the world to address folks that spit in the eye of Congress, which is exactly what Hunter Biden is doing. He needs to be held accountable. I'm very happy for this hearing. I yield back. Okay, gentleman yields. Uh, gentleman yields back. The question question occurs on the amendment from the gentlelady from Pennsylvania. Uh, the clerk will. Uh, oh, excuse me. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, no. No. Any no. of the chairs and noes have it. And a recorded vote has been requested. The clerk call the roll. Mr. Jordan. Nope. Mr. Jordan votes no. Mr. Isa. No. Mr. Isa votes no. Are you next? Mr. Buck. Mr. Gates, Mr. Gates votes no. Mr. Biggs, Mr. Biggs votes no. Mr. McClintock, Mr. McClintock votes no. Mr. Tiffany, Mr. Tiffany votes no. Mr. Massey, Mr. Roy, Mr. Roy votes no. Mr. Bishop, Mr. Bishop votes no. Ms. Sparts, Ms. Sparts votes no. Mr. Fitzgerald, Mr. Fitzgerald votes no. Mr. Bence, Mr. Bence votes no. Mr. Klein. Mr. Armstrong, Mr. Armstrong votes no. Mr. Gooden, Mr. Van Drew, Mr. Van Drew votes no. Mr. Nels, Mr. Nels votes no. Mr. Moore, Mr. Kiley, Ms. Hageman, Ms. Hageman votes no. Mr. Moran, Ms. Lee, Mr. Hunt, Mr. Fry, Mr. Nadler, Aye. Mr. Nadler votes aye. Ms. Lofgren. Aye. Ms. Lofgren votes aye. Ms. Jackson Lee. Mr. Cohen. Aye. Mr. Cohen votes aye. Mr. Johnson. Mr. Schiff. Aye. Mr. Schiff votes aye. Mr. Swalwell. Mr. Liu. Aye. Mr. Liu votes aye. Ms. Jayapal. Mr. Correa. Ms. Scanlon. Mr. Nagoose. Ms. McBath, Ms. Dean, Ms. Dean votes aye. Ms. Escobar, Ms. Ross, Ms. Ross votes aye. Ms. Bush, Mr. Ivy, Mr. Ivy votes aye. Ms. Ballant, Ms. Ballant votes aye. Gentleman from Virginia. Mr. Klein votes no. Anyone else? Clerk will report.
Mr. Chairman, there are nine ayes and 16 noes. The amendment is not agreed to. Um, the gentleman from New York is recognized for an amendment. Mr. Chairman, I have an amendment at the desk. Uh, clerk will report. The gentleman from Arizona reserves a point of order. Amendment to the amendment in the nature of a substitute to the committee report for the resolution. Without objection, the amendment will be considered as read. The gentleman from New York is recognized to explain his amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, the underlying report states that, quote, the committees are concerned that foreign nationals appear to have sought access and influence by engaging in lucrative business relationships with high-profile political figures, immediate family members, close quote. And it states that the committee seeks to craft legislative solutions to address this problem. My amendment provides further context for this discussion by highlighting recent reporting concerning former President Trump and the businesses controlled by his family during his presidency. Given the majority's interest in foreign nationals seeking access and influence through business relationships, I presume that they were alarmed to learn from recent reporting that properties owned by former President Donald Trump and controlled by his family during his presidency received at least $7.8 million in foreign payments from 20 countries during his tenure, including $5.5 million from the Chinese government and the state-controlled entities, as well as sizable payments from Saudi Arabia. The concern over foreign and domestic influence over the office of the president and other public officials is so critical an issue that the nation's founding fathers included bars to such entanglements in Articles 1 and 2 of the Constitution, known as the Emoluments Clauses. As the framers knew, even the appearance of corruption can lead to reasonable concerns that our democracy is for sale. Donald Trump has a long history of connecting his views of other nations to his financial remuneration, stating in 2015, for example, that he likes Saudi Arabia very much since they buy apartments from him and spend in the tens of millions of dollars on these apartments. Recently, he's had warm, warm words for China's leader, Xi Jinping, repeatedly calling him, quote, an exceptionally brilliant individual, close quote. Could it be because the Chinese government lined the pockets of his family business throughout his presidency? We don't know. But if the committee is truly interested in pursuing questions related to foreign influence of presidents by means of business relationships with family members, it would be a glaring hole to ignore the business relationships of the previous president and his family. My amendment would correct this deficiency. I ask that my colleagues support the amendment. And I yield back the balance of my time. Withdraw. The gentleman withdraws his uh, uh, objection. Um, the uh, gentleman from Florida is recognized uh, for, to speak on the amendment. Uh, I'm glad that the ranking member has ripened the question of bribes from China. I think it's one that I would like to explore with Hunter Biden if he were willing to properly acknowledge and honor the subpoena that he'd received from the United States Congress. And if there's any comparison on the Trump policies toward China and the Biden policies toward China, I am eager to engage in that comparison because President Trump put tax tariffs on China. He was tougher on China than any Republican or Democrat president in my lifetime for sure. And what I've learned about studying bribes is that when people pay them, they typically want something in return. And so when you've got these allegations about Trump in China, you're able to easily compare that to a record where Trump cracked down on China. Now let's compare that to the Biden record. After the Biden China bribes, you get the Biden administration dissolving the China initiative that President Trump and his administration set up at DOJ to specifically go after and prosecute uh, Chinese efforts to engage in malign influence with academia, with politicians, with high society. And I know we have members of this committee intimately familiar with Chinese malign influence. And we would want a DOJ resilient and capable to be able to ensure that no one fell victim to that from the United States Congress to even service on a city council. Uh, now, Hunter Biden had this interesting email exchange on his laptop related to China that I can't wait to ask him about when a judge ultimately orders him here or, or to a jail cell. Why was Hunter Biden hosting 
the, meet, the annual meeting for his investment fund at the home of the Chinese ambassador. Seems like an odd choice. There are a lot of great venues in Washington that could host the meeting for your annual investment fund, but when you choose to do it at the home of the Chinese ambassador, that seems to send a pretty clear message that it's hard to figure out where China ends and the Bidens begin. And I found it particularly interesting that while Hunter Biden was personally setting up this special and unique venue to convince people to invest in his fund based on his close ties with the Chinese, that all he had to do to secure the venue was agree to a private one-on-one -on -one meeting with the ambassador beforehand, which the emails indicate Hunter was readily willing to do. So aren't the rest of you curious to know what the ambassador wanted to meet with Hunter Biden about before Hunter Biden used his Chinese relationships to enrich himself, his family, his relatives, his uncle, his father, to pay the bills, to run the Biden crime family. I'd like to know what was going on at that meeting. Would the gentleman yield? Sure. Uh, let me just say it may very well be that what Hunter Biden was doing was wholly improper. It may very well be that what Hunter Biden was doing is crim was criminal. There is a special prosecutor. What there isn't is any evidence that President Biden had anything to do with any of this. Well, I, I, I would suggest that they probably, the ambassador from China probably wasn't requesting a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Hunter Biden to go over investment tips and investment strategies. And if we had Hunter Biden in the witness chair, we could ask him. So it's one thing to say, well, you know, there's just no evidence here. And then when we want to ask simple questions, like was the ambassador asking about Hunter Biden's art interests and whether he preferred oil paintings or watercolors? I'm guessing that's not the case. And the reason Hunter Biden doesn't want to be in that witness chair is because when confronted with the documents and the evidence, they are boxed in because everybody in this country knows what was going on. Hunter Biden was the bag man. He was collecting the money, and Joe Biden was the inside man. And he was delivering the results for China and anyone else that was willing to pay him off. And that's what we're trying to get to the bottom of. I yield back. Gentleman yields. Who seeks recognition? Question of Kurt, gentleman from California. I won't take the full five minutes, but I just want to sort of answer once and for all the absurd allegations about the former president. Not since George Washington have we likely had as wealthy a president as we did in President Donald Trump give up his day-to-day -day life as President Trump did. He gave up and put into trust 400 different entities, gave up control of them for his entire presidency. And for the Democrats to point to the sales that occurred at the Trump Hotel is not only beyond the pale, but it happens to be so factually incorrect with our founding fathers. During George Washington's presidency, were his thousands of acres simply laid fallow? Of course not. He continued to produce both wheat and grain, but as, also, as many know, alcohol. And he sold it. And he sold it to whoever bought it and the buyer could well have been our own government. That was not the intent. And certainly, if his wheat or grain were exported and bought by some entity outside the U.S., nobody was going to say, oh my gosh, George Washington is on the pay of a foreign government. That's not what that clause in the Constitution means, and everyone knows it. But what it does mean is, did you receive funds, directly or indirectly, that were not for proper goods and services. That is what we believe Hunter Biden did. He received clearly millions of dollars into shadow companies, and there is little or no, in many cases, little or no actual performance and certainly no history prior to the vice president having that position where Hunter Biden could go around the world selling it. But again, I'm going to just close. I said I'd make it in less than five minutes. We are not even talking about that, except that the Democrats want to keep making this about Donald Trump. It's not about Donald Trump or his family. If we had a subpoena to Donald Trump today or to his family 
and they wouldn't come, then I would be supporting a contempt until they did come. We have a valid and undeniable subpoena that has not only been denied, but as I've said on every previous time, the middle finger has been pointed at the American people, and that is what we are here for today. I look forward to the vote and the final vote, and I yield back. Gentleman is back. Gentlelady from Pennsylvania. I move to strike the last word. Gentlelady is recognized. I just want to correct the record, uh, and that appears in the report that I have already put under unanimous consent into the record, the Democrats' report about the pocketing of millions of dollars over the course of two years of President Trump's term. I will note that uh, once the Republicans came into the majority, uh, now Chairman Comer shut down any more information coming to us about the other failures and, and taking of emoluments against the Constitution. But let's get the facts straight. Immediately, and I'm quoting the report, immediately after the 2016 election, ethics experts from across the political spectrum reading the writing on the wall urged the new president-elect to fully divest himself of his business interests and place them all in a truly independent blind trust. We all lived that. Guess what? It never happened. Again, quoting the report, throwing caution to the wind and the Constitution to the curb, former President Trump bluntly and cavalierly rejected all such bipartisan advice. Here's what he did. He instead chose to place the day-to-day -day management of his businesses in the hands of his two adult sons while retaining personal ownership and control of all his businesses, as well as the ability to draw fun funds from them without any outside disclosure. End quote. That's page seven for those who want to begin to read the report. I'm not impressed that uh, the former president did not take what he was constitutionally allowed to take, which was the president's salary. I am not impressed, because if you go to the report and you take a look at what happened, uh, information, page 10 of the report, information available to the committee shows that among countries patronizing Trump properties, China made the largest total payments to the president's private business interests. Let's see who it was. According to the subset of documents obtained from Mazers uh, and uh, additional documents from the U United States Securities and Exchange Commission, these payments collectively included millions of dollars from China's embassy in the United States, the Industrial and Commercial uh, Bank of China, a Chinese state-owned enterprise, and Hainan Airline Holding Company, a subsidiary of Chinese company HNA Group owned by the Hainan provincial government. And if you turn to page 14, the largest entry, there's a grid of all of the money that they were able to track by way of the financial documents. China's the top performer. Total spending through China to the president's entities identified, again, just two years and just partial documents, five uh, million five hundred seventy two thousand five hundred and forty eight dollars where were those dollars deposited basically pocketed Trump Tower Trump International Hotel Trump Internet uh, Washington DC Trump International Hotel Las Vegas five point five million dollars taken in during the president's time when he failed to divest himself I don't know about you but once the uh, once the president lost and had to leave the White House under terrible duress, as we all lived. Did you notice what happened to Trump International Hotel? Closed. I yield back. General Lee yields back. The gentleman from New Jersey is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Real quickly, you know, this is raw politics, and the other side is real good at it. So, you know, don't keep your eye on the ball. Look at the shiny object. That Sometimes you only need one quick question, and Adam Schiff has that. Jim Jordan, no, Jim Jordan we're waiting for an answer. Why he was unwilling to tell the country about that conversation in the run-up to a violent attack on the U.S. Capitol. Or why he spoke with White House staff about, as we wrote, the prospect of presidential pardons from members of Congress. He was unwilling to say why he thought pardons from members of Congress might be necessary. And today, he's unwilling to tell us why 
there should be a different standard for a member of Congress who is subpoenaed than for a private citizen, and why the standard for a private citizen should be so much higher. My colleagues on the other side of the aisle say, that's not a germane question. We love to hide behind germaneness when we really don't want to answer the root of the matter. And the root of the matter is, why is Hunter Biden's failure to appear worthy of a criminal contempt, but the chairman of the Judiciary Committee's unwillingness to comply with a congressional subpoena gets nothing more than a shrug? That's really the question before this committee today. And so far, there is no answer.